Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Sapphire Now. Headline sponsored by SAP HANA Cloud, the leader in platform as a service. With support from Console Inc., the cloud internet company. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Burris. We are here live at SAP Sapphire. We are on the ground live, this is theCUBE. Our flagship program, after the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Peter Burris for three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage and we would not be here without our sponsors, SAP, the HANA Cloud Platform, and Console Inc. Connect in the clouds at Console Cloud. Check them out. Uh, Peter, kicking off uh, day one of SAP Sapphire. Really it's about how to do business in this new digital transformation. Big news up there, Satya Nutella, CEO of Microsoft, talking about the partnership, broad support, joint plans to run SAP HANA Cloud on Azure, Office 365. This is certainly the new Microsoft. This is the new SAP, but not a lot of new SAP. SAP's always been open. They've been very ecosystem driven. What do they have to do? What's your take on SAP in this new era of cloud, enterprise, software, with cloud and data? Well, SAP for the past few years, John, has been very focused on usability, and so uh, they have initiated a number of different initiatives to try to have SAP appear like a modern platform so that when people move to the cloud with SAP, they got there with a technology, with a, with a graphical user interface and an experience that was reminiscent of the cloud. And so this notion of integrating Office 360, which is a cloud-based uh, version of Microsoft Office, is a natural extension of that, and it just makes perfect sense, because Microsoft Office is, without question, the broadest, most adopted uh, Office suite in the cloud, uh, and having SAP integrate into it so that you can, from Office, utilize certain classes of SAP services makes an enormous amount of sense. And it's part of SAP's overall mission to, as I said, present that notion of a modern application set, not just a migrated application set. And this is the big theme we're seeing across all enterprises. When we go to these shows from these companies, SAP, IBM, Oracle, EMC, HP, Enterprise, we always talk about their customer's customer. So I want to get your take. That ultimately is the person they're selling to, and the value proposition of simplicity, data, cloud. It seems like all these vendor shows are all cloud shows, all data shows. What is in the mind of their customer's customer? Because at the end of the day, they're the ones who are buying software. They're the ones who are trying to run things simply. What's in the mind of those customers? Well, the first thing to note is that increasingly customers of, in, in, all, in all parts of society, are seeking out digital interfaces to either directly engage brands or complement the way that they engage brands. So you walk into a retail store with your phone and you do comparison shopping while you're in the store. Or you go online and you skip the retail store. But also that's the case in small businesses where increasingly small businesses are able to use very, very powerful software to do the same types of, or to run the same types of procurement processes that companies that have historically been, you know, four, five, eight, twenty billion dollars. And so software is flattening dramatically many of the distinctions that, or many of the things that used to distinguish how customers behaved, how small businesses behaved, and how big businesses behaved, and SAP wants to be at the center of that process so that the experience you gain as a consumer is transferable to the experience as a small business owner or as a large enterprise so that the whole thing is bought together by the experiences you have with the class of software that does the work for you, or you work with. I just wrote a post on Forbes over the weekend. I interviewed Weta Digital, it's an Oracle customer, and they're running high performance storage on premise because they're doing all the computer animation uh, for these uh, movies like Avatar, Independence Day, um, um, all the Spielberg movies. Yeah, the, the Lord CG, of the Rings came out of Weta. Lord of, and amazing, but it's no cloud because they're on premise. There's still hardware, I mean it's an Oracle example, but you know, SAP has partners that run storage. There's still a lot of stuff under the hood. Right? So making the stuff under the hood seamless seems to be the mission. At the same time, there are advances in flash, there are advances in, in compute, and cloud and on-prem play a big role. What's your take on that from a practitioner standpoint, from a doer standpoint, how do they look at this new landscape? Because they still got to have the engine of innovation, technology, that's going to enable some of that business model innovation. Well, a lot of folks talk about new platforms over the past 50 years in computing. You know, we went from mainframe to mini computer and there's all this 
talk about you know the fourth platform or whatever some other analyst firms talk about. I think the better way to talk about it is the characteristics of the problems that you can solve as technology advances. And the problems that we're now able to solve with some of the new technologies are the problems of doing business right now. Doing a better job of serving customers, presenting options better, doing a better job of what we call managing the problems of demand. How much, where is it going to be needed, what's going to be needed, et cetera. And so what we're seeing is across the board a new class of business problems being coming with or coming in underneath the umbrella of what technology can actually do for you. And it, those business problems are going to be easiest to attack because many of them, especially the ones associated with demand, are at scale, since you're engaging customers, you're engaging partners, are require a, a, a high amount of responsiveness to the market, so the whole notion of observe, orient, decide, and act becomes absolutely crucial, agile, so as a consequence, Everybody's looking at these new technologies and seeing new opportunities precisely because we're now able to identify new classes of problems that we can actually attend to with some of these new technologies. SAP, been around 25 years, big anniversary. Um, talk about, for them, and, and their competition too, is a real battle for growth. Growth, profit, and a new kind of engagement. We're seeing, uh, obviously, growth and profit have been around you know, in you know, history of business. So we, that's always stuff they always want to be growing on new trend lines. But now you have social business, you have this notion of engagement. Thoughts on SAP and what they need to do to get that growth engine going, to get that profitability, obviously software is very profitable, but now engagement. What's your thoughts on those three things? Well the first thing on the growth side is SAP is unlike a lot of computing companies in that their acquisition strategies thus far have been relatively successful. They haven't failed in a lot of their acquisitions. In fact, many of their acquisitions have led to significant new advances, not only in terms of growth, but in terms of what the overall suite can actually do. Uh, and as a consequence, they've shown you know, double-digit growth over the past five, six, seven years on a, on a CG, CAGR basis. Uh, from a profitability standpoint, not much to say there right now, uh, except that if you watch their numbers as they move to the cloud, they're costs seem to be scaling with that, so we're not seeing a lot, of a lot of net new efficiencies lately. But some of the most interesting things that are happening with SAP is as they go through this transition, their customers and their customer satisfaction continues to go up and their employee engagement, the way that they measure employee engagement continues to go up. So think about that for a second, John. You're talking about a company that acknowledges that it's in significant transformation, it's been very aggressive at buying a lot of new companies, software companies especially over the course of the past few years, and yet at the same time their employee satisfaction, their customer satisfaction continues to go up. Some, they're doing something right. Well, certainly a great opportunity for SAP. We're going to be on the ground. Obviously, the Microsoft partnership is very telling. And this is really the strength of SAP. I want to get your final thoughts on this segment for their intro uh, around ecosystem because software businesses like SAP have done very well in the past and we're seeing HP Enterprise doing the same thing, going back to their roots. Partnership, the ecosystem, the big system integrators to other partners. Now with data and social engagement, you're seeing a whole new level of partnerships. Your thoughts on this new ecosystem formula? Well. The, the notion of an ecosystem is very powerful because it says that if you gain experience with a set of relationships, partners, customers, and this whole notion, notion of social business, you can use that experience to drive new levels of efficiency and start incorporating or realizing some of the network effects we like to talk about so much. And that's led to this notion of ecosystem competition. It's been a feature of computing for a long time. But one of the things that I find especially interesting here, John, and I think we need to look for as we go through Sapphire, as we kind of wander through some of the interviews we have, is to what degree is SAP going to establish itself as one of the drivers of that competition? Historically, SAP, while being a successful, has been, I, I, I say defensive, almost. Our technology's good, it does some good things, uh, you know, uh, but I, I have a sense now that SAP is going to go on the attack. And so it's going to be interesting to see the degree to which SAP's ecosystem does a full frontal against Oracle's ecosystem and some of the other ecosystems out there uh, as they try to bring what is working uh, to more customers, especially customers that already have stuff installed and are relatively mature in other environments. I have a feeling that that's going to be a big question for SAP 
over the course so of So you're the saying year. use the ecosystem as a power generator for that growth, for that competitive advantage? Yeah, where the ecosystem, to answer the question simply, yes. But, it, but even more than that, to turn the ecosystem to attack other ecosystems. It's going to be an ecosystem battle. We're covering it live. This is theCUBE live at SAP Sapphire. And we're, you're watching theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Peter Burris. We'll be right back with more after this short break. This is theCUBE. You're watching live here in Orlando. There'll be millions of people in the near future that are, want to be involved in their own personal well-being.